Ecker, or the Embracing the Culture of Research Educational Research Center, would like to welcome everyone through its advocacy project, Sagip Mananaliksik for Everyone, presents a free day um, webinar entitled Data Collection, Doing the Right Thing from the Very Start. So this is actually the third day of the series of seminars that we have. So day three is planned for data collection and for data analysis procedures. By the way, I am Assistant Professor Lenis Asin Sisapara. I'll be your host and moderator for this evening. Okay, I would just like to introduce to you our uh, people or the people behind EdCore, of course. We have two programs who are ongoing, which are the pro uh, Project Sagip Mananaliksik for Everyone. And uh, this uh, seminar is uh, because of this project. And this is headed by our project uh, coordinator, Dr. Bernadette Elharde. And we also have our project, Sagip Mananaliksik, one-on-one. And our coordinator for this one is Dr. Adrian Lawrence P. Carvajal. And of course, not to mention the, um, the, the leader of uh, all of the, uh, uh, what call this, the research consultants of EdCore. Okay, so the mastermind of this project or of, of EdCore, we have the head, the research consultant of EdCore, which is Dr. Richard D. Sanchez. So of course, for this evening, we would like also to welcome the all of the regional coordinators that we have tonight, and of course, the research consultants nationwide that are also watching together with us. And of course, our dear teachers, our principals, and our students who are with us tonight. Okay, so to formally start our program, we would like to welcome the assistant professor for of the Philippine Women's University to give us his welcome message. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Joel John A. De La Merced. Good evening, sir. Thank you, Mom Lenis. Okay. So, good evening to each and everyone. Our dear research health consultant, Dr. Richard E. Santos, our invited guest speaker, the moderator for the day, the, distinct, the distinguished colleagues in research, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me extend a very warm welcome to all of you to the webinars entitled Plan for the Data Collection and for Analysis Procedures. This series of webinar sessions are facilitated and organized by EdCore Educational Center which is very succeeded and relevant in the field of research. And its core objective of its, its project Sagib Manelixik for everyone. We would like to thank you for attending our, for attending virtually on this webinar. As we all know that by promoting the culture of research to all people, EdCore aims to contribute in improving the society through academic inquiries and realizing that people conduct research for the ultimate goal of serving the Almighty through service to, our, to others. As we all know that the purpose of research is to enhance society by advancing knowledge through the development of scientific theories, concepts, and ideas. Our research purpose is met through the for forming hypothesis, collecting data, anal analyzing results, forming conclusions, implementing findings into real life applications and forming new research questions. As we all know what is research, let me say, sim let me put this as a simple word. Research is a process of discovering new knowledge. This knowledge, we can be either the develop development of new concepts or the advancement of existing knowledge theories that will lead us to a new understanding that was not previously known. So your presence today is very much appreciated because your eagerness to learn new things is our burning torch in our objective. So welcome, enjoy, and learn new things in this webinar. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Dr. Joel, for welcoming everyone in this webinar. So let me share my screen again for the continuation of our uh, program. Okay, so this will be our program for tonight. So we have started at 6.30 p.m. and we will be ending the session at 8.30 p.m. So we will be starting the program with a lecture. And then after the lecture, we will be having the oath-taking ceremony of the new research consultants. So after which we will be having the open forum and the Q&A. So let me run through the house rules for this webinar first. We'd like to request everyone to kindly put your microphones in mute mode so as not to distract our speaker for uh, tonight. And um, of course, you have the option to turn on or off your video during the session. And uh, for those who are joining through our uh, Zoom uh, link, meeting link, I would like to request you to follow the name format, the acronym of your school, followed by your last name, and then your first name for easier uh, identification. And of course, if you have questions, you can ask uh, it through the chat box that is provided in our Zoom meeting link. Okay, so I'd like to introduce to you our resource speaker for uh, this evening. So Mr. Katungan is an MA Philippinology major in language, culture, and the arts, graduate of Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Marikina in 2019. He also finished Master of Science in Mathematics at Ilohio Amang Rodriguez Institute of Science and Technology in 2017 and Master of Arts in Education major in Special Education at Roosevelt College Foundation Incorporated in 2015. At present, he's a master teacher one in handling both qualitative and quantitative researches for senior high school at Lagro, National, uh, Lagro High School, Schools Division of Quezon City. He's also a member of the prestigious organizations, Mixed Methods International Research Association, Linguistic Society of the Philippines, Asian Qualitative Research Association, International Organization of Educators and Researchers in, Incorporated. And he has also published an article in a high impact journal and has been invited to speak in both national and international conferences in the country. So ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome our resource speaker for tonight, Mr. Randolph G. Katungal. Good evening, sir. Um, good evening, ma'am. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Yes, can, I, uh, can I be seen in the screen, po? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, to be able to reduce the bandwidth, may I uh, request participants, no? Uh, allow me to, ano, uh, to close my video. Later, I will, ano, uh, show my face na lang, no? Thank you. Okay. So, let me share my screen. Can it be seen na ba, ma'am, the PowerPoint? Yes, sir. It is preparing. Yeah. yeah you can see you. that now. Okay. Okay. So I'll be talking for tonight about planning for data collection in analysis procedure, and that is actually brought to us by the EdCore. Embracing the Culture of Research. So I'll be your lecturer for tonight. For the outline, sorry. So before that, the procedure for data collection and analysis, no? according to Castillo in 2006. So the research design must be presented in detail so that if replication is desired for purposes of validation, it can be done. The steps in data collection and analysis must be followed in using a specific research method. So as you can see, I uh, underlined the three um, keywords, replication, validation, and research method, because uh, we should be reminded of the role or the essential role of research method that plays no, in any research endeavor. Okay, so the outline, I'll be talking first on focus group discussions, 
followed by the uh, III or the in-depth interview, the FI, the focus interview, the KII or the key informant interview, as well as the Filipino indigenous uh, methods. So these three um, parts of the outline uh, were taken from the research methods under qualitative research and the questionnaire development as a whole for both quality and quantity. Okay, so let's start with FGD. So FGD actually um, some author some authors say that there must be six to twelve knowledgeable informants, but for Creswell, the the minimum is five and the maximum is ten. So it depends on how the data is being saturated. For example, um, you're talking about the lived experiences of um, the senior high school students when it comes to online learning. Since the, the shift of our educational system from the traditional to the um, online, in which um, almost all the schools around the world are actually adjusting. So, for the lived experiences to be able to have a data saturation, we have to identify, for example, for five members of the group, or for five members, if the five members already um, answered the same response, it means that you don't need to um, add more uh, additional member. For example, uh, on that five members, there are different um, responses. So you have to add up um, an, another or maybe two members for that group. So the aims of FGD are the following. One, understand the probable underlying reasons of certain behavior, attitude, or motivation. Second, probe the participants' reactions to specific stimulus and elicit the participants' ideas or comments on the topic or topics. For one, uh, we have to be reminded of comparing the mailed questionnaire or survey techniques. The focus group discussion would effectively induce a relatively higher response rate among informant discussions. So take note that each member of the FGD would be called discussants, would be called discussant rather. And with the facilitator's guidance, the method significantly reduces the participants don't know, so we have to quote the phrase don't know, and no answer responses. Furthermore, both the facilitator and the discussants have the opportunity to pose follow-up questions regarding unclear statements that might arise during the focus group discussion. Okay. Okay. So probing the participants' reactions to specific stimulus is very important because we really need to identify what specific or particular stimulus or particular stimuli that would actually manifest on the focus group discussion. And also, we can actually know, identify, or determine the possible comments from the topics that would be um, further investigated. investigated. Okay, so the advantages of FGD are the following. One, confusing or vague questions may be clarified among the participants. Second, observation methods can be employed easily by the researcher facilitator to be able to save time. So the FGD facilitator or any member of the research team can effectively detect a particular discussant's behavior which may either generate insights on the subject or even cause the FGD failure. Admittedly, no method is really a perfect one. So that's actually a fact, no? Walang perfectong metodo o pamamaraan sa pagkalap uh, ng impormasyon. Hence, you as a researcher, you need to know the FGD's basic and inherent limitation. And that limitation is actually the discussions are rather time-consuming. That is why the ideal um, time to spend for the FGD is actually one hour and 30 minutes maximum time. For minimum time, it, it can have um, 
45 minutes to one hour. But exceeding or beyond the one, one hour and, and 30 minutes, that would be actually time consuming. And it would actually really um, make the participants or the key informants suffer. And also, um, they may have the in Tagalog, no? Sila ay mapagod talaga or they become, they may, uh, they may have boredom when you exceed beyond the time allotment. Okay. So the role of FGD facilitator should listen to all the discussions and give everyone a chance to express his or her ideas or opinions. This means that the facilitator should be a good listener. Yes. So ang facilitator or moderator, or we can actually have an assistant facilitator if the FGD is very um, lengthy. Or meaning to say, you have um, many or plenty focus group or focus groups. Now, as, uh, aside from good listener, a facilitator should be well-trained in making follow-up questions or in politely cutting short unnecessary discussions. Hence, the FGD facilitator must also possess the appropriate attitudes and skills. Okay, there are times or instances where a focus group discussion may suddenly turn ori or veer away from the topic. So may mga times talaga na yung uh, some of the focus groups hindi medyo naintindihan yung Ano, no? yung flow ng discussion. So the role of the moderator, the facilitator, is to redirect them to the real setting or real nature of the research or study. Also, our participant may tend to monopolize the discussion. That is why there are two types of participant. Later on, I will be discussing that. Hence, the FGD facilitator should be highly skillful trained and experienced in coping with such eventualities. That is why uh, many, uh, many related studies or literature are saying that FGD is actually um, a very time-consuming method in qualitative research. And that is very true. You have to spend um, a lot of budget or um, the, the cost is not that um, not that lesser compared to other methods. Now, since the FGT method is normally a time-consuming activity, it may become costly for everyone concerned. And that is facilitator and discussions alike. Yes. In terms of time and resources, therefore, the research proponent or sponsor should provide funds for items such as honoraria, tokens, transportation, and snacks for all the FGD participants and the facilitator's professional fee. So in FGD, you have to have enough resources. Okay, next slide. So what are the factors for a successful focus group discussion? One factor is the or the major factor is the facilitator. Why? Facilitator plays a vital role in the, in the success of the focus group discussion because facilitator conducts a literature review. A facilitator should be a good conversa conversationalist. A facilitator should be expert in the field of the research that he or she is conducting. A facilitator may decide to have an assistant facilitator which will be assigned to help the lead facilitator in moderating the focus group sessions. Okay, the next factor would be the venue. The venue should be an enclosed room if possible, and big enough to accommodate of all to accommodate of all the discussions. If the described venue above can hardly be found in rural areas or urban poor communities, 
then the following venues may serve. One, you may have a clearings under a tree. Second, you may have it on public spaces. You may have the FGD uh, on, in house of one of the discussants or one of the community leaders. You may have it in the chapel. You may have it in the barangay hall. You may have it in the basketball court or in a community place. The third factor is the focus group discussion team or the FGD team. The team comprises the following. The lead facilitator and or assistant facilitator, recorders or documenters, and observers. Recorders or documenters take the minutes of the discussions and afterwards prepare the corresponding transcriptions. The recording may take the form of a write-ups, digital or tape recording, video recording, or photo documentation. Recorders or documenters are essential for you to seek the discussion's permission for the recording of the proceedings. You should also be ready for the possibility of the discussant requesting of the record discussions and for you to respectfully comply with such requests. Observers usually assist the facilitator by monitoring what is or are happening in and during the focus group discussions. Aside from the observer, you may have the administrative staff members. They are usually providing the logistical support to the team. Meaning to say the communication. Uh, the communication is being, being done by administrative staff when contacting the key informants or the participants. Okay. Then we have the FGD participants. We have criteria for selection according to Portus in 2018. We have first, participants are directly or affected by individual or involved in the discussion topic that is depending on the research stated objectives, the criteria may include the following socio-demographic characteristics. So we have the age, the gender, the civil status, the educational attainment, the occupation, the profession, the economic status, the religion, and the regional affinity. The second criteria period would be the participant for FGD should possess good communication skills and the willingness to actually participate in the discussion by sharing their insights and opinions. We have two types of participants. First one is the overly shy, meaning to say tahimik lang, no? parang wasabi sa Walang, ma, walang masabi sa FGD, walang ma-contribute. Then the other one is the blabber or the obnoxious ones. Blabbers tend to monopolize the discussion. So ito yung mga KSP no, sa FGD. Sila yung mismong parang, sila lang yung gustong sumagot sa mga tanong ng uh, facilitator. So the blabbers or the obnoxious ones show up, intimidate or pick a fight with fellow participants, they react adversely to them and etc. And how do we avoid disruptive participants? First, the facilitator could tap the other research team members to help devise effective ways to deal with the undesirable discussion. And second, to be able to avoid the scenario to happen, you, uh, the FGD team should plan ahead of time. We also have the FGD budget expenses or tokens. So the budget allocation is necessary to cover costs of holding the FGD, including the venue rental, the FGD facilitator's fee or professional fee, the tokens for participants, honoraria for team members, office supplies and equipment, and some items are maybe negotiated. Um, 
as you can see, uh, the FGD budget expenses tokens are actually um, very, uh, you know, um, it's hard to 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 meet the requirement because it's expensive. You, you need a uh, you need a lot of resources or budget to be able to successfully um, complete the FGD. Um, Portus around year 1998, uh, she conducted a phenomenological study in Sambales and she found out that after um, calling for inform or key informants, the number of key informants increased because of the FGD budget, uh, because of the FGD tokens. Meaning to say, uh, after the interview in this in this focus group in this focus groups the on uh, the the token would be given and because of the token the number of um the number of key informants increases we also have the fgd guide a qualitative researcher's main instrument or tool in facilitating the conduct of fgd How do we conduct FGD? One, determine the research problem or subject matter. Second, determine the informant's qualification and establish the discussion group. Third, develop or formulate an FGD guide. Four, select the FGD moderator or facilitator and the FGD team members. Fifth, determine the date, time, and place of FGD session. Six, prepare the supporting materials. Seven, conduct the conduct the FGD proper. Eight, process, analyze, and interpret the FGD findings. Okay. Sorry, wait lang ha. I ano ko lang. Hindi na pakita yung saglit. Okay. Nakita ba miss uh, moderator? Hello. Yes sir, nakikita Ayan. ko. Kala po, kala ko po na wala ako now. So we have the steps in FGD processing of findings. One, transcription of the FGD findings. Second, analysis of the transcriptions by identifying themes, patterns, study concepts and categories. Third, selection of quotations of, or identification of quotable quotes from the discussants to serve as testimonies in your data presentation. Fourth, the analysis of the FGD findings using various techniques such as the data reduction ways. We have the matrices, graphs, Venn diagrams for comparison and contrast, constant comparative method, Use theoretical framework as tools for analysis, analysis by objectives. Okay, let's have the in-depth interviews, focus interviews, and key informant interview. Patton in 1990 stated that in-depth interview aims to find out what is in and on the interview with mind. In 2018, Fortus was able to differentiate the focus interview and key informant interview um, description. The researcher has already studied and analyzed beforehand the discussion on a particular subject matter or specific event that is for focus interview. And for the key informant interview, it has the most unique feature, feature because he or she acts almost as a surrogate researcher. But uh, as you observe, these three are similar. In qualitative research, we have two commonly used methods or instruments. We have the FGD and the in-depth interview. How do we start the interview for the in-depth interview? One, set an appointment with the key informant. Do the interview at his, her or most convenient time and inform him or her about the duration of the length of the interview. 
Second, a third, secure a written consent for the participation in the interview research. Four, prepare the logistics, documentation, materials, personal information sheet, etc. Five, start the interview by introducing yourself and explaining the study or research, its objectives and of the interview activity itself and what would happen to the results of the interview. And also, this part would actually um, be reflected on the ethical compliance or the, ethical, uh, the ethics of your research. Six, emphasize that there are no wrong answers in the initiated. What do we do during the interview? One, establish rapport with the informant even before the actual interview. That is why it is uh, suggested that we have to know our key informants. Second, ask the informant to fill up the personal information sheet or the PIS, which will help the researcher in constructing the informant's profile. Third, prepare a key informant interview guide which, as the name implies, is simply a guide and therefore may not contain all the questions that you need to ask. That is why for a rigorous qualitative research, it is suggested to use an unstructured um, interview. Four, make the interview flow smoothly. Avoid jumping from one topic to another. Okay. So next slide. Fifth, the interview process must be conversational, involving a lot of listening. Allow the informant to talk without interruption unless he or she is clearly going off tangent or out of the context. In this case, you should redirect the conversation. That is why for qualitative research, it's actually uh, the, the interview that would actually um, give you a better um, result. So let's proceed with the Filipino indigenous methods. The FIM or the Filipino indigenous methods arose because of the lack of um, foundation or lack of the use or utilization of the Western methods. Feliciano in the year 1982 stated that Western methods do not fit in our Philippine culture. And that is why Filipino indigenous methods exist. And it is rooted from Psikolohiyang Filipino, which is actually um, founded by Virgilio Enriquez in 1975. So usually, uh, the FIM are being used in social sciences, specifically in psychology. We have the research skills, mga eskala ng mananaliksik. Okay. Playing it by ear or the so-called the so pakapaka pa. And what do we mean by pakapaka pa? Wait, let me check my, my notes. Okay. Pakapaka pa is the initial stage that is entering a community, okay? Where you scout for some data to construct a profile of the individual or group or the community. It becomes unobtrusive in that you conduct your observations from a distance or afar. You get data not necessarily from the subject informants themselves, but rather from other sources such as documents or records, informants from nearby communities or workers from government organizations or non-governmental organizations. This is also called collateral interview. 
So, pakapaka pa or playing it by ear is also called collateral interview. Pakapaka pa is indigenous to Philippine experience because Filipino scholars have learned to assume the pakapaka pa perspective, a suppositionless approach to social scientific investigation, which is an approach characterized by grouping, by groping, searching, and probing into an unsystematized mass of social and cultural data to obtain order, meaning, and directions for research. That is according to Torres in 1982. On the other hand, when we talk about the pagmamasid or close observation, it involves some sort of surveillance or social investigation where you do not go directly to the community. Rather, similar to the pakapa pakapakapa stage in which you utilize data from other sources. Pagmamasid means close observations about the habits and rituals of a group of people. That is according to Farnasio Cantancio in 2004. Shared sensitivities or pakikiramdam is another unobtrusive method to get data regarding the problems, concerns, and issues obtaining in the community and how the subjects feel about this. Needless to say, you need to be sensitive to the subject's conditions and feelings. You as the researcher need to adjust your action which should fit the community's culture. Okay. Aside from the this uh, unobtrusive method, we have separate and uh, separate obtrusive methods. Uh, sorry, the other one is unobtrusive. This one is obtrusive methods. First kind of obtrusive method is chatting or pakikpagkwentuhan. You engage the subject informants in this activity to gain their trust. The method employs direct communication to build rapport and to generate a newfound friendship, trust, and confidence between you and the subject in four months. Consequently, the method enables you to get relevant data during your chatting session with the subject in four months. Pakikinig or listening is a paired or coupled with pakikipagkwentuhan. This method requires you to listen closely to the informant's stories the manifestation of your genuine empathy, or mainly by listening, or sympathy, as the case may be, would be vital in getting a sense or idea of the subject informant's innermost feelings. Likewise, you would have to follow the subject informant's narratives with the full appreciation of their context. Patanong-tanong or asking questions is another form of obtrusive method which mainly employs or showcases your interviewing skills, but not necessarily with an accompanying, accompanying interview guide or survey questionnaire. However, the sequence of the questions is not strict, but free-flowing and conversational in style to make the informants at ease or comfortable. Asking questions while conversing with the subject informants would allow you to probe deeper into the concepts being studied. Subsequently, after asking the questions, you would have to listen with great interest to the subject informant's stories. We also have the participatory methods. We have three. First is pagsubok or testing or trying out or taking part. In adopting this method, you take the initiative to more actively interact with the subject informants, taking part in their activities such as rituals, social affairs, religious events, economic pursuits, etc. You effectively become a participant in these activities and acquire an understanding of the people's culture. Pagdalaw-dalaw or repeated visits, in this method, you conduct casual but repeated visits to the community. As a result, 
you develop not only rapport, but also cultivate a relationship with the subject informants, gradually getting deeper into their ethos as far as the subject informants themselves would willingly allow. Pagsabaybay, this method subsumes pakikialam, pakikilahok, and pakikisangkot. Each one a method belonging to the participatory methods category, which itself falls under the FIM research scale, namely mga eskala ng manaliksik. Accordingly, you become involved in the community's affairs and at the same time, take part by facilitating these activities. Monitoring the community's plans and projects and partaking actively to ensure the success of the community's projects would be part of your activities. Okay. Research subject relationship skills. Mga eskala ng patutunguhan ng manariksik at kalahok. So ito na po yung involvement no, ng kalahok with manariksik. Pakikitungo o pakikibagay, pakikisama, and pakikisa, pakikisa, or chatting or telling stories, adapting to or going along with, going along with, are, are referred to be interrelated stages of trying to gain the trust and confidence of the informant subjects. In doing this, you have to blend with the woodwork, so to speak, as you try to gather pertinent data and construct and construct the individual or group or community's profile. In the process, you learn about the people's ways and understand their circumstances and sensitivities. Second, pakikilahok and pakikisangkot or participating or being involved with. In these stages, you heavily involve yourself in the community's undertakings. Taking a more active role means spending longer time and sharing your ideas, even personal ones and opinions on the community's activities. Pakipagpalagayang loob or being comfortable with, at this stage, you and the informant subject shall have reached the highest level of your relationship. Each party fully trusting the other. Both of you would share ideas, opinions, and stories with ease and confidence. Both of you would know each other much more, such that you could easily obtain data and get to the bottom of things. Now, there are constraints in using the Filipino indigenous methods. According to Enriquez in 1990, Filipino indigenous methods might not flourish due to the pervading bias toward the use of English as a medium of instruction and thus a medium of thinking. That is why in Filipino or in Fili Filipinology, araling Pilipino, ini-embrace namin itong psikolohiyang Pilipino. Kaya nga, ang, ang, ako, na, ako uh, naniniwala ako na I believe that the use of bilingualism in the classroom would actually affect also the belief of students and teachers. However, it depends on the context. There are also disagreements among social science, scientists, that psikolohiyang Pilipino might not be truly unique to Filipinos. Others look at the indigenous methods as translation of Western participant method or observation and thus not original and truly Filipino. Lastly, real world constraints might inhibit the use of psikolohiyang Pilipino because of its dominant application in local settings. Okay. So let me proceed with the questionnaire development. So questionnaire development has nine steps. Okay. First one is what we call the review of related literature. Okay. For the review of related literature, it is important that you measure not only the target variables or indicators, but also other indicators that, that precede, follow, or surround the target variable. 
these indicators will facilitate the verification of the validity of the information about the target variables. This will also allow you to develop models that can further characterize the population of interest. The literature shall provide you inputs on the initial list of possible questions to be included in the questionnaire. That is why RRL also serve as hypothesis. Meaning to say, you can also look for possible hypotheses that you may use in your present study. Second, construction of the theoretical framework. Learning from the review of literature, you can now construct the framework that will also delineate the boundaries of the questions to be included in the questionnaire. You only need to include the core information that will suffice to answer the research problems since you might not be able to secure the cooperation of the respondents or participants if the questionnaire is too lengthy. Third, focus group discussion or FGD. This can help you identify the initial set of questions to be included. Some of the questions identified from the literature can be raised during the focus group discussion to gather further insights from the eligible respondents of the survey. A more detailed discussion of focus group discussion has been um, mentioned. Drop a questionnaire or questionnaire drop. This should incorporate what you have derived from the literature, from the theoretical framework, and from the focus group discussion. The drop questionnaire can include a few more questions than what will be used later on. The reason for the excess questions is to ensure the data to be generated from the survey aptly complement the, re the research objectives. Pre-testing or test piloting is conducted to ensure that the questions are clear and can be easily comprehended by the respondents or participants such that they can easily provide answers to the questions. Among similar questions leading to the same information, pilot testing or pre-testing should be able to help you pri prioritize those that are more comprehensive relative to the objectives of the study. Translation, to ensure that the respondents clearly understand the questions and their responses appropriate to the questions, the questionnaire should be translated into their own dialect. Another translator should then translate it back to the language that the research team understands. And last is finalization. The final questionnaire should include clearly framed questions and be free from contradicting questions for the same variable or indicator. Now, we have also um, questions that would finally appear in the questionnaire. And how do we consider the final question? One, will the question provide information to answer or address an objective? So kailangan natin makita no, na nagbibigay ba na impormasyon itong tanong na ito para masagot yung ating mga objectives. Ikalawa, how important is this question in addressing an objective? If this is not asked, will it be detrimental to the study objectives? So, Gaano daw ba kahalaga ang tanong na ito para ma-address sa objective o masagot sa objective natin? Kung hindi ito itatanong, no? ito ba yung mag-aaraw ng, um, ng problema no? after or as we proceed to the study? Third, will the respondents be able to answer the questions? Will they be willing to answer the questions? So, kailangan natin... Um, alamin no, kung kaya ba ng mga respondents natin o actual respondents natin yung mga tanong natin na sinet. And also, kaya ba nilang sagutan ito and are they willing to answer this? Then last, will the data generated from the questionnaire be sufficient to answer the research objective? So, as you um, listen to what I have mentioned a while back, um, the, the question should be parallel to the objectives, to the research objectives. Okay. The data processing 
we have the editing and the coding. After data collection, the filled up questionnaire should go through the editing process in order to ensure the quality, consistency with other information, and completeness. The data are then encoded in a spreadsheet to facilitate the analysis. So the first part is editing. There are two types of editing used in survey research. The field editing and the central editing. Field editing requires you to review the accomplished questionnaires as soon as the interviewers turn this over to you. You must take this opportunity while the interviewers are still around and while you are still in the community or area. The interviewers may be requested to help decode abbreviations, special symbols, and other side notes indicated in the questionnaire. The interviewers can make a callback if needed to verify and clarify vague and incomplete answers of the respondents. Central editing, on the other hand, after the questionnaires are turned over for encoding, another level of editing called central editing must be done. Other researchers may opt to conduct this level of editing electronically that is incorporate the editing or data checking algorithms into encoding or database management system. That is why for qualitative research, we have um, software to use the max UDA and for, and for the quantity, we are using SPSS. But for the max UDA, no, um, there are codes that are difficult to, to identify by the max UDA, Espe especially or specifically no, kapag iba-iba yung codes na lumalabas. The task of central editing involves checking for inconsistencies and incorrect entries. You should replace inappropriate responses with proper answers by reviewing other information in the questionnaire. This should be limited to those few cases where it is obvious what the correct answers are. You should strike out inappropriate answers and convert this to missing, no answer, not applicable, or unknown option. The last part of data processing is coding. Coding involves the process of establishing categories and subsequent assignment of data. Ideally, a researcher should pre-code the questionnaire as early as when you formulate the questions. Pre-coding of questions means that categories have been established at the time the questionnaire is constructed and then updated after pre-testing. For the category, others, quote unquote, you can identify traditional categories from the responses. Browse from the filled up questionnaires. For open-ended questions, either you encode this verbatim or you establish categories after at least some of the questionnaires have been reviewed or edited. We also have to assign each category a numerical value consecutive to facilitate computing for statistical analysis. Okay, there are three guidelines in coding as suggested by Portus in 2018. One, codes should be able to capture information that can contribute in answering research objectives and solving research problems. A ratio or interval scale measurement should not be converted into codes because coding will truncate some information. Second, there should be an adequate list of alternatives that will be coded. The pretest and initial review of the questionnaires can facilitate the identification of an exhaustive list of alternatives or options or the responses. An answer to a question must be placed in only one cell in a category set. That is, the alternatives should be mutually exclusive. Moreover, the category set should follow a single dimension that is every class in the category set is defined in terms of one concept only. If in FGD there is a guide, 
in data in coding we have the so-called code book a code book is a manual which specifies the application of coding rules to the variables based on the questionnaire it serves as a uniform guide among encoders to induce standardization in encoding a more efficient process and less errors in capturing the data from the questionnaire to the data management system. The code book includes the question or variable, a category list or note on what to encode, and a column location in the database. You can include some quality control routines in the encoding program. For example, if the questionnaire includes some skipping patterns, then certain fields can be automatically skipped if a response to a specific question leads to a skipping certain question. With accessibility to modern technology, like a tablet, many steps discussed in this coding is instead um, used in face-to-face -face interview. But um, we have computer-aided personal interview or the CAPI, which, all, which is also be conducted. All the data provided by the respondent or participants are encoded by the interviewer into the database. The data capture system may also be programmed to include editing and qu data quality control systems. So let me talk on uh, for statistical analysis. Actually, there were many, no, there were many statistical tools to use, and I will not be pondering or on devote much of that time for statistical analysis because um, there would be another session for this, and also statisticians um, decide for the statistical treatment of a particular or specific study. Okay, so let me proceed with, since we are in the new normal, I want to um, also focus um, my, my talk on the following. So Poriante in 2020 stated the paradigm shift from traditional to digital based research methodologies. Since we are on the pandemic, we are now with the, digi the digital based research methodologies. So, According to this uh, researcher and author, there were um, two classification of the research, the digital based research methodologies. We have the synchronous and the asynchronous. We know that in the traditional face-to-face, -face, we have the interviews, the FGD, observation, the in-depth interviews, the field trips, the paper-based survey, etc. For the synchronous or the virtual real-time interactions, we also have the interviews, the FGD, the live observation, online text-based discussion. For asynchronous, we have the online survey, journal diaries, interviews, email-based interviews. So um, phone calls, Skype, Zoom meeting, Google Meet, WebEx meeting, Instant Messenger, Jitsi, FaceTime, etc are under the platforms for synchronous data collection. It is real-time, co-presence. There is a direct interactivity. It is practical. It is efficient. There are video recording features. Okay. I want to emphasize the importance of the audio-visual recording. So Sage, to, Sage in 2006, the recording of audio data through devices such as tape recorders has been a significant development within qualitative research, replacing the researcher's handwritten notes. As well as with audio recordings, video recording is seen to be more reliable than real-time observation and note-taking as it allows for repeated examination of the data verbal and nonverbal, and consequently data are not limited by the problems of selective attention or recollection. 
Okay, Google Forms, SurveyMonkey, Sojo Survey, Microsoft Forms, Typeform, etc. are platforms for asynchronous data collection. It is convenient data collection tool, can be inexpensive, there is a quick result with little to without interviewer bias. So that's the advantages of web-based questionnaires. Okay. So there is a use of social media of, for data collection according to Daoud in 2020. So the, uh, the social media that we can use are the following, the, the Facebook group, Facebook Messenger, the Insta story or the instant story, the Instagram, the Twitter survey, the YouTube, the WhatsApp. So we can have opinion survey, interviews, FGD, live observation, photo, video, or voice elicitation, teaching or students observation. Okay, so for my references, I use the following references. Okay, so thank you and God bless. Thank you very much po, Sir Randolph. Ang dami po namin natutunan no, for this evening. So you have practically covered a lot about data collection and data gathering. But of course, uh, before we proceed to the next part of our program, that is a Q&A, we will first be having the awarding or the, what call this, the taking rather of the, uh, the research consultants. And of course, we would like to call again on the floor. There. The, uh, the head research consultant of Edgar Educational Research Center, Dr. Richard D. Sanchez for the taking of the new research consultants. Uh, Mom Lenis, uh, it will be Dr. Bernadette Lehardi, our project overall coordinator who will uh, administer the oath. Ah, okay, I see. Sige. Again, let's all welcome the overall Again, coordinator the overall board of our project Seek for Everyone. Let's all welcome Dr. Bernadette Lehardi. Hello po, ma'am. Hello, po. Good evening, and thank you so much, Ma'am Lenis. Evening, and of course, to um, Sir Randolph. Thank you so much. Hi, Doc. Thank you, Dean. <laughs> okay, so we'll have the oath taking for our research consultants. Uh, kindly request so them. May I request the? Uh, okay. May I request the research consultants, to please? Okay. Open their camera. Okay, na po tayo. If they can also open their uh, microphone so we can hear them uh, repeating your, uh, repeating your, uh, so we can hear them uh, repeating your, uh, repeating your, uh, repeating your, uh, oh, not to you, JC, no, you guys are <laughs> Okay, patayin na lang po. Baka may sound siya takay sa background na rin. Okay. Sige po, uh, Doc Dett. Okay, are we okay? okay? So, again, good evening to everyone. So, may I request research consultants to please raise your right hand and repeat after me. Hi, please state your name. 
I, Francis Kumawa. Valdez. Do solemnly and sincerely promise. Do solemnly and sincerely Do promise. promise. Swear and declare. Swear. Swear. That I will truly and faithfully. That I will truly and faithfully. Truly and faithfully. 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 And to the best of my skills, knowledge, and abilities. In the best of my skills, knowledge, and abilities. Execute powers and trust deposed in me. Execute powers and trust in the post in me. As Edcor Educational Research Center's research consultant. As a core professional research center's research help me God. So, so help, help me help God. Me God. Congratulations po to our new research consultant. Congratulations. Salamat po. po. Congratulations to everyone. Congratulations po. Congratulations po. Salamat. Okay, congratulations to our uh, new research consultant. So, lumalaki po na lumalaki ang ating EPCOR family. And uh, we hope that we will be seeing you in our future activities as either a uh, resource person or moderator or someone who will be delivering the welcome and the uh, closing messages for our program. So, at this point, we will be having the acceptance speech. Okay, so... for. On behalf of the research consultants or the newly um, research consultants, we call on the teacher three of Candon City High School. Let's all welcome Mr. Jose Victoriano Valdez. Pagbalang gabi sa ating lahat, in Iloko, we say, na yung amin. It is very humbling to be chosen to give an acceptance speech in this virtual ceremony. What a wonderful opportunity to be speaking virtually in front of some of the brilliant and passionate educators and researchers in the Philippines. With a grateful heart and with the utmost support you have given in behalf of my fellow consultants, I am humbly accepting this position of being an ethical research consultant. Buong puso kong tinatanggap ang hamon at tungkuling iniaatang sa akin ng organisasyon at taas nung ibabandila kong ako ay kasapi ng EDCOR Educational Research Center. In behalf of my fellow consultants, agyama na. Thank you so much, educational, EDCOR Educational Research Center, headed by the very welcoming and jolly head researcher, Dr. Richard Sanchez, for bringing us together in this great and very significant milestone. A special thanks also to Dr. Dominic Patrick Galdones, our regional coordinator for Region 1, and a good friend of mine for introducing me this organization. As research consultants, we bow to always adhere to the objectives of EDCOR, which is to promote the culture of research and contribute in improving the society through academic inquiries. I believe that EDCOR envisions us all to be of greater service, not only to our fellow researchers and educators, but also to our students. Sabi nga nila, hashtag para sa bata at hashtag para sa bayan. Gaya din ang sabi nga ni Sir Randolph kanina sa kanyang lecture sa pangangalap ng datos ukol sa pakikitungo, pakikibagay, pakikiista, pakikisangkot, pakikilahok at pakikipagpalagay ang loob. Tayo bilang mga kasabi ng organisasyon ay sisikapin ring makitungo, makibagay, makiisa, makisangkot makilahok at makipagpalagay ang loob sa isa't isa. Padayon mga kasama kong mga guro at mananaliksik na way magsilbing instrumento ang bawat isa sa atin na maipahayag sa lahat ang napakahalagang kampanin ng pananaliksik hindi lamang tungo sa pansariling pagtatagumpay kundi maging sa pagkamit ng pagbabago sa maraming aspekto ng buhay. At 
sa mabilis na pagbabago ng panahon. Ang kultura ng pananaliksik ay magpapatuloy at walang anumang hamon ng panahon ang makapipigil sa atin, lalong-lalong hindi ang COVID-19. Once again, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. I can't wait to share this endeavor with you, my Atcor family. Please always keep safe and God bless us all. Thank you very much for that very passionate and harm melting <laughs> message for uh, everyone no, on behalf of the new uh, research consultants of EFCOR. I know you're all excited for the question and answer, but of course, before we do that, uh, may I request everyone to please turn on their videos so we will be having our documentation. So, pakita po natin ang ating mga kapugian, kagandahan. And so before, hindi pa po tapos ang ating program, I will just be uh, having a picture taken before the question and answer. Ayan, sige. Um, hindi po natin sure no, kung anong frame po tayo. We have two frames here. So, ngiti lang po tayo. Baka matchempahan tayo ng camera na nakasimangot. Ayan. Sige po. Okay, so I'll be having the first frame. O, smile mo na. One, two, three. Sandali po, ipupush lang po natin. Okay, so for the second frame, ayan, smile po tayo. May mga naka-off po ang camera. Nahihiya po. <laughs> ayan, sige po. Ayan, may mga nag-open pa para sa second frame. Sige. Okay, smile. One, two, three. Okay. Natin. You'll be seeing your faces no, on the Facebook group of uh, EdCor. Yan. So, mag-a-update naman ang ating head research consultant. No? Ma -ma Napakasipag po ni Dr. Sanchez na mag-update ang ating FB group no, sa mga events. So, for now, um, anybody can uh, ask, no? Marami tayo masyadong natutunan. Uh, malaki ang scope ng ng talk ni Sirando. So ako, personally, I've learned a lot no from this uh, data, uh, Dani. No? Most especially the Filipino uh, indigenous methods. Uh, hindi na bago sa atin ito. But of course, uh, it's not uh, being emphasized no? in the textbooks that we use. Usually, uh, it's only being encountered uh, yeah, most of the time for social science majors that it is being emphasized that there must be a, a, a method that uh, should be utilized no, for our um, indigenous people and of course in the context of the Philippines as well. So ayan, so kaya po kasi wala pa po tayong nakikitang questions sa ating chat box. So siguro kung gusto po natin, no, we can personally ask our resource speaker, you can raise your hand. Uh, to be recognized. Yan. Meron po ba? Yan. Sige, wag po tayong mahiya. We still have um, about 45 minutes. Yan. So pwede po tayong magtanong kung baka, baka currently po meron tayong mga ginagawang uh, studies na gusto nating ayan. So meron na po tayong question. Um, from Mr. Armido Galivo, Mabuhay, can I request for a clarification regarding themes and coding in qualitative research? Uh, hi, Sir Randolph. Yes, ma'am. Actually, ma'am, um, yung themes kasi, mag magbumula yan, uh, yung coding, ay proseso rin yan sa data processing natin. So, yung coding na yan, mag-code tayo depending on the theme that we can identify in our research. So ako kasi personally ako um, I am more of ano ako, I am more inclined with quantitative however I I do have knowledge in qualitative research so to be able to ano po no, to to differentiate the themes in coding we we should have actually a validation no tama naman yun no? there, there should be a validation on the part of the um researcher Thank you very much, Sir Randolph. I hope yes, I, I, I was able to answer the question. 
Ayan. So, sumagot na si Sir Armido. Noted, Sir. Yes, I do agree with Sir Randolph na talagang um, yan, yung valid, kailangan talaga din na nababalidate natin yung ating themes. Kasi may mga nagsasabi nga na in qualitative research, parang hindi ba subjective yan? Kasi galing lang din sa researcher yung mga team. So yes, uh, I do agree with Sir Randolph that there is a process of validation. Sometimes we ano, we go back to our to our key informants. Tama po ba Sir Randolph? Diba? Yes, we validate. Yan. We validate to them kung tama ba yung intindi natin dun sa mga sinabi nila kung tama yung pagkakaayos natin ng data. So, kasama po yun sa proseso. Kaya nga ma ako ma'am, ano, in addition po, no, for me, mas okay pa rin yung manual coding kaysa dun sa paggamit ng max QDA kasi mas nakakuha tayo na actual na ano, na resulta nung codes no na kailangan nating i-code. Yes sir, toko po yan kasi sometimes so pag na medyo na engrossed tayo dun sa technology, sometimes na defeat yung purpose na yung uh, gusto nating uh, uh, i-arrive no, ng mga themes, minsan natatabunan siya. It's because uh, maraming suggestions. Diba sir, yung ating yes, ano, sir. Max XQDA and Evo. Ayan. So siguro talaga po ang success ng data analysis ay nasa researcher pa din kung paano siya magde-derive ng meaning no, doon sa nakuhang data. Ayan. So we have a comment here. I don't know if it's a comment or a question. Okay, from Sir Miko Jan Lopez. That's why qualitative data analysts must be consulted to avoid biases sa mga themes na na-arrive. Sir. Yes, sir. Um, you're correct po. Talagang kailangan po natin yan. Tsaka, ano po, it, um, yung qualitative research, hi, ma, ma, mahirap pong makipag, uh, what do you call this, uh, debate na, na that it's, it's, It's not so, yes, it's not an objective. No, Actually, kasi quality. kaya nga qualitative kasi bias talaga siya. Di ba? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, and to, ano ma'am, to add, to add up, kaya nagkaroon ng, diff, kaya nagkaroon ng uh, statement na objective ang quantitative, no? Compared to qualitative kasi, sa quantitative kasi, hindi mo naman nakakaharap mismo yung ano yung participant mo or respondents mo eh. you just give the questioner for them to answer no pero you are you are distant apart to each other no wala walang masyadong connection unlike sa qualitative na nag-uusap kayo to focus group discussions or in depth interview kaya nagkaroon ng comparison na objective ang quantitative then subjective ang qualitative yes sir i agree with you po kasi iba talaga ang lalim ng ano eh, ng qualitative research eh. So, actually, Doc, meron kayo nabanggit nyo yung if, when you discuss the Philippine indigenous method, para may shinier kayong literature na parang kinikwestiyon nila yung indigenous methods na parang it's just adapted oh, from the uh, Western, no? Siyempre, hindi naman tayo papayag. So, I think my views on that is Siguro no yung proponent nitong tong methods na to hindi naman talaga kinuha no I don't agree with that kasi kaya nga siya may mga terms kasi there are processes no that is really culture based so etong mga terms niya no yung pagkapa yung mga ganun no? so it's it's really based I think on the experiences while immersing on a certain community so siguro ito yung mga ano nila na mga nakita nila na mga ways now while they are actually doing the research so yeah now we have another question ayan so from uh, mr armida galiva again uh, is there a limited number of rrl or review of later literatures required in every manuscript or study uh, traditionally speaking schools actually um um have the policy you know na magkaroon ng limited number But in the you know uh, nowadays we don't have to limit the number of RRLs as long as the literature has been exhausted. So dapat na exhaustion literature, no? The body of literature. Yes, sir. Para bang ano na? Uh, um, sir, ano la may add to that po? Baka manuscripts, sir. Are you pertaining to publication po ba? Um, 
kasi if you're pertaining to publication po kasi ang usually uh, sa journal public a journal depende sa journal may mga nakita po tayo para ang gusto po nila ay a research work okay so mm, research work lang daw ma'am ah okay po depende pa rin yan ma'am sa panel panel kasi mga yes. ano And I think the comment then si Mr. Glenn Villones institutionalized guidelines. Yes po, we agree with that. No, iba iba po talaga na bawat school lahan. And so do we have other questions? Sige po, feel free na po to ask. I remember, ma'am, na ano mo kanina di ba? Yung stand yun dun sa bakit kina question yung ano yung pagkakaroon ng FIM, the Philippine Indigenous Methods. Kasi nga si Virgilio Enriquez ay nag-aral sa ibang bansa nagpakalubasa siya sa psikolohiya. So, syempre, gagamitin niya yung konsepto na napag-aralan niya ng psikolohiya from other country, daladala niya yung pagpunta sa Pilipinas. Pero, it does not mean na kinuha niya, niya I mean, pareho lamang yung konsepto doon sa ibang bansa. Kumu- gumawa siya ng sarili niyang metodo dito sa Pilipinas. Sa pinawag niyang psikolohiyang Filipino. Diba? Kaya dapat hindi kinu-question yun. Yes. Ma'am, si Mr. Valdez, may Sometimes tanong po yan. Yung... Ay, sorry po. Ah, Mr. Valdez. Opo, Sir, question sa chat, po. Ah, yes po. Parang gusto niyang magtanong. Sige po. Hello ah, po. po. Magandang gabi. Magandang gabi po, Lenis. And congratulations po kay Sir Randolph. Maraming maraming salamat po sa sharing. Uh, you, sir. sir, I would just like to be enlightened kasi... Uh, when we had our division research uh, proposals, uh, Ed and my partner, we proposed a basic research qualitative under phenomenology. And then, one of our panel members tinanong sa amin kung anong variant of phenomenology ang gagamitin natin, namin. So, kami nung partner ko, sir, hindi namin alam yung isasagot namin, sir. So, so, ano po ba yung variants of phenomenology na tinutukoy po kaya niya? Kaya, kaya ano sir, hindi na namin tinuloy kasi wala pa kaming readings regards to variants of phenomenology. Ano yan sir? Oo. Yes sir. To address your question sir kasi, mayroon tayong tinatawag na philosophical underpinning sa qualitative research. So kung phenomenolo- phenomenological research yung sa inyo, mayroon yung pagbabatayan na author. Halimbawa si Mustakas, yung famous no sa phenomenology. If I'm not mistaken, 1984 yung year na kung saan siya yung proponent ng phenomenology. So, depende kasi yan, sir. Kung kay Mustakas ka, nagamitin mo yung kanyang data collection anal- analysis uh, procedure. So, kung kay ano ka naman, kay Creswell ka naman, you have to follow kay Creswell. Pero, kung kung gokombine nyo yung dalawa or higit sa, higit sa dalawang proponent ng phenomenology, mahirapan kayo. Kaya mas maganda, you stick to one uh, proponent of phenomenological research. Oo. Oh. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, naguluhan lang kasi kami noon, sir, kasi when we had our, uh, tawag dito, uh, qualitative research in our post-grad, wala kasi nabanggit sa amin na ganoon during our class. Kaya medyo naguluhan kami noon when we are presenting our research. Kaya, ayun po, kasi kailangan po siguro namin talaga pang magbasa pa ng marami Uh, sir Jose, Sir Valdez. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Mag-a-add po ako dun sa, mag-a-add po ako dun sa sagot ni. Uh, sir, i-review mo yung ano, magbasa-basa ko po about dun sa, uh, meron yan yung descriptive phenomenology ba siya or interpretive uh, phenomenology? Tama po yung, uh, ah. tabi, tama po yung, yes, sir. Ito yung tanong sa inyo sa graduate school, anong uh, classing phenomenology kasi usually po, Uh, lalo na ang phenom lagi pong ginagamit yan sa qualitative research pero uh, kung talagang uh, siguro sa senior high school hindi mo muna ano yung mga kumagandong ka lang sa generic <laughs> na phenomenology okay Opo. ka lang doon pero kap- habang lumalalim yan nire-review mo rin may mga may mga uh, basehan pa kanong masabing ito nag-fall siya under descriptive phenomenology and then uh, uh, kung interpreted Uh, phenomenology ba? Actually sa mga kahit sa mga grads ko sa mga nagma-masters nakita ko phenomenology lang siya as is. Pero kung magiging mas yes, ka talaga ka more readings, you'll see a uh, uh, difference nung uh, dalawa. So I recommend po uh, magdagdag po ng readings about doon sa dalawang uh, types po na iyan. Salamat po. 
Si Richard, actually po, yung po yung nabanggit po ng aming panel member, oh, po. yung descriptive and interpretive na oh, po. phenomenology variant. So, yung po yun. Oh, po. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Magbabasa-basa na lang po. <laughs> Thank you po, Sir Valdez. Ayan, so we're still opening the floor to more questions. Ayan, so we have another one from Mr. Simon Toribio. So the question is, do we allow senior high school students to conduct ethnographic design? Hindi ba siya risky because they have to look for ethnic group? Mm, actually, sir, uh, for that question, Kung face-to-face -face yan, okay naman ang ethnographic research design for quality. But in this kind of pandemic, I don't suggest it. Kasi hindi mo na makikita yung kultura sa ano lang eh, sa research, uh, research um, online no, na methodology. It should be face-to-face. -face. Digital ethnography, I don't think na um, madali siyang gawin. Pero, kasi para maging rigor yung ethnographic research na face-to-face talaga yan eh. If you agree, no, um, Miss Moderator. Pero sa akin yun ang, yung stand ko. Ang ethnography, maganda, magandang isagawa yan kung face-to-face. Kasi -face. we are actually focusing with the culture. Yes, sir. Um, actually, ang um, ethnography kasi talaga, sir, um, Correct me if I'm wrong. No, you, you need to be immersed talaga sa ethnographic community. Oh, unless you have to live with experiences. Yes, sir, unless you are in an online community, you can do ethnography. Yes, ethnography <laughs> na ethnography na lang. Oh, <laughs> Ayan. Oh, and then ethno ethnography na lang. So we, we have a comment here from Mr. Ah, yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I'm Mr. or Miss Barry Sorry. Parenas. Uh, Sir Barry, okay, so may comment siya, digital ethnography. Yan, so. Yeah, <laughs> I think ano po siya, isa po siya dun sa mga parang mga bagong methods ng ethnography, especially very much helpful, especially ngayong COVID-19 pandemic. So I also had a study before kasi I'm also a debate coach. So parang nagkaroon ako ng study on digital ethno parang digital ethnographic research dun sa mga online Philippine tournaments. And then I tried to study yung... Um, I tried to study yung mga motions or parang mga deb debatable things related to the environment. So I think it's also an equally legitimate uh, methodological practice nowadays in digital ethnography. It's the same concept ng ethnograph ethnography that you really have to be immersed in the culture. The only difference is really the platform. So for example, in our case, in the debating community, you have to like sort of understand yung nuances ng cultural practice ng debating community and so on and so forth. Even the mere pag tsaka yung pagla-like and then pagka-clap or pag hear here or pag shame same So parang it's generally ethnography migrated in the digital platform. So yeah, it's an equally legitimate um, methodological method. Uh, Prof. Yeah. Lenis, may add to that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Unang-una po, uh, congratulations sa uh, Sir uh, Pareñas. No? He was uh, designated as uh, a coordinator ng EdCourse at Global City. At na nakita ko po, sir, Napakarami mong fans. Siyempre, lumilitaw sa page ng Etcore yun. Ikaw ang uh, lahat yata ng mga estudyante sa school ninyo sing, uh, nag-share doon sa, doon sa designation. <laughs> oh, and, and, and dami mong fans. Ha? In fairness sa'yo. Ha? So, congratulations. Uh, babalikan ko lang po yung doon sa tanong ni uh, uh, Sir Simon uh, Toribio. Do we allow senior high school students to conduct ethnographic uh, design? Hindi ba siya risky? because they have to look for a uh, ethnic group. Dun po muna sa first uh, part po regarding the risk. Uh, siguro po yun yung parati nating sinasabi sa ako po sa mga estudyante ko, ang parati ko sinasabi sa kanila, ang utak ang imagination ng mga researchers natin ay napakalawak. Sino ba tayo para pigilan sila? Kung ang uh, imagination nila ay nakakarating sa ganitong kultura, makakarating sa ganitong lugar, sino ba tayo para pigilan yung growth nila? na gusto nilang pumunta doon. Pero sabi ko nga, gaano man kaganda ang gusto mong i-conduct na research, you have to think na yung, kasi ang research hindi lang siya basta gusto mong malaman ng isang bagay, mag-go ka na. Titingnan mo yung mga, ano, titingnan mo yung sitwasyon. Kaya nga po yung tanong mo na hindi ba siya risky, nasa sa inyo po yun kayong mga 
kayong mga uh, nasa eskwelahan, tayong mga guro, kailangan ma-determine natin na in as much as we would like our, our students na maka-discover ng maraming bagay, in as much as gusto natin silang lumayo, tingnan natin tayong makakapag-determine kung uh, ito ba ay uh, kaya ba nila, sapat ba yung oras, uh, sapat ba yung uh, finances nila halimbawa kasi di ba sa research ito yung mga bagay maliban doon sa gusto mong malaman ng isang bagay meron siyang mga technical parts na kailangan mong i-consider before you actually conduct so uh, kayo po ang makakapagdetermine noon halimbawa po dati sa uh, eskwelahan na pinagtuturuan ko uh, bilang research coordinator po ay uh, merong uh, sensya na po na medyo humahaba merong isang uh, guro na may concern sa kanya yung magulang. So, syempre, bilang research coordinator, ako po yung... Pasensya na po, hindi ko na pala in-open yung camera ko kasi mali yata yung pagkakaposisyon ng camera, yung noo yung lumilitaw ko. Kaya pagpasensyaan nyo na po yan. So, yun po. Merong magulang na pumunta sa school, syempre, uh, pupunta yan sa research coordinator. Ang sabi niya, uh, gustong pumunta ng anak ko sa bundok. Gusto niyang pag-aralan ng buhay ng mga kapatid natin. Ganyan, ganyan. Uh, pero ayaw siyang payagan ng teacher. Kaya po, uh, in a way po, nire-reklamo niya yung teacher sa research coordinator. Ngayon po, ang ginawa ko naman ay uh, ipinaliwanag ko sa kanya kung ano ba yung uh, ipinaliwanag ko sa kanya kung ano ba yung uh, tinatawag nating uh, uh, ethnographic study na kailangan nito, immersion, hindi pwedeng nagpunta ka doon. Tapos isang araw lang, 24 hours, sasabihin mo, alam mo na yung buhay nila, alam mo yung nararamdaman nila. Eh, samantala, hindi, hindi ganun ng ethnographic research kailangan mong ibabad yung sarili mo doon sa community para malaman mo kung ano talaga yung mga ginagawa nila. Sabi ko, kung papayagan po yung anak ninyo, eh, paano po siya makakapasok sa iba niyang mga subjects? Hindi lang naman research yung subject niya, maraming subject yan. Tapos paano po yung, uh, yung gastos niya? Alam niyo po ang nangyari, doon na naiintindihan ng magulang na ah, marami naman po palang pwedeng ibang gawin. Nung ipinaliwanag ko sa kanya yung ibang research designs, meaning to say, makakapag-research naman pala ang bata kahit hindi niya gawin ito. Kasi sa, uh, inunahan ko na siya, ayaw, ayaw po namin pigilan yung anak niyo na doon sa imagination niya, yung curiosity niya na gusto niyang malaman ito. Pero dahil mga bata po iyan, uh, tinitingnan po namin ang sitwasyon. Kung nasa tamang edad na po yan, kahit sa niyo gustong mo, kahit sa kabilang planeta pa siyang gustong mag-research, or as long as kaya niya, wala pong pipigil sa kanya. Pero tayo po, bilang nasa institution po na nagtuturo sa mga bata, ginagayad natin sila. Marami po tayong mga uh, kinoconsider. Isa na po doon yung safety nila. At tayo lang po ang makakapag-determine noon together with the, with the school administration. So gano'n man kaganda ang gustong gawin ng bata, tingnan po natin yung uh, risk. And then magkocomment din po ako doon sa last part na sinabi ni uh, Sir Simon. Uh, sabi po niya, uh, because they have to look for uh, ethnic group. Ako naman po ang opinion ko doon, pag sinabi mo kasing ethnography, not necessarily hahanap ka ng ethnic group. Yes, para kasing ng pagkakaintindi natin, pag sinabi nilang ethnography, pupunta ka sa mga ganitong may uh, mga, uh, mga, alimbawa, mga kapatid o kaya mga ganitong mga may kanya-kanyang kultur. Pero alam niyo po ba, uh, may mga nabasa ako na pag sinabi nating ethnography, not necessarily pupunta ka sa mga Uh, ganoong lugar, ganoong places. Pwedeng sa classroom lang, merong, merong mga, alam mo, merong mga grupo ng bata, na, grupo ng estudyante na may kakaiba silang kilos na parang palagay mo, uh, iba sila doon sa ibang grupo. Then you can consider that as some sort of ano, uh, uh, ethnogra- ethnographic study, not necessarily na pupunta ka sa isang ganitong, g- g- ganoong uh, places. But of course, that is, uh, ano, syempre po, pag uh, inarap mo sa ibang panel yan, ang pagkakaintindi, Uh, ganoon, fixed. Tapos ginabing ethnographic, mga cultural na uh, mga minorities, mga ganoon, and so on. Pero ako po, sa opinion ko, not necessarily. Even nandoon ka lang sa campus, makakap- makakapag-conduct ka ng ethnographic uh, study for as long as you can justify bakit itong group of people na ito, yung, yung, yung study mo ay mag-fall pa rin siya under uh, ethnographic study. Thank you po. Asensya na po, napahaba. Thank you very much po, Dr. Sanchez. Ayan. So, maraming maraming salamat sa additional input, sir. So, punta na po tayo sa susunod na question. Ayan, from Miss Mary Jane Octaviano. Hello po, pwede po ba ako makahingi ng topic or title ng qualitative and quantitative research para sa senior high school? H.E. po. Thank you po. Ayan. So, baka po mayroong gustong mag-share ng topic 
Yan, para po makatulong po tayo kay Ms. Mary Jane. Uh, Sir Randolph, meron um, po ba kayong masasuggest? Ma'am, can you open your microphone? Pwede pong paanimit si Ma'am Jane. Ipa-adapt po natin siya kay Sir Randolph. Sir Randolph, alagaan mo na si Madam at uh, alagaan mo yung mga titles na ginagawa niya. <laughs> Kahit tapos na itong event na ito. Kasi mga titles na sa... Uh, for both quantity and quality ang hinihingi ni ma'am. So palagay ko yung yung oras natin ngayon hindi sapat. So ang nakikita pa solusyon dyan is uh, alagaan mo si ma'am para doon sa part na yun. You can communicate with each other also. Actually kasi ako naman ano, um, Doc Sanchez, ay di ba I'm teaching or handling um, TVL, specifically yung HE na yan. Uh, they are actually insisting na dap- ang researches nila are aligned to HE. But we have to look at also, no, na we are on the basic research. Why insist na dapat align sa kanilang, um, sa kanilang strand or track, no? Kung kaya naman nilang mag-provide ng kanilang, or magbigay ng kanilang research topic or title, na kaya nilang i-pursue. Pero maganda, maganda nga naman po yun, ma'am, na magkaroon silang alignment. Pero kung hindi kaya... Don't insist na magkaroon ng alignment doon sa track or strand. Okay na yun na meron silang familiarization no? on the use of the um, qualitative and quantitative research. Ayan. So, tama po, no, Mr. Randolph. And of course, may add to that po. Baka po sa school niyo po mismo, may mga topics mo, uh, Ma'am Mary Jane, na yung mga common problems po no, na pwede po natin i sa HE within the immediate uh, Uh, so community po natin yan, para hindi po mahirapan din yung mga bata. So another po, meron po is from Mr. Paul Kabutotan. Hello po, is qualitative audits compare current practice against structural measures? Ayan. Sir Paul, uh, baka po pwede natin makausap si Sir Paul para we can Sir be Paul? Yeah, ako nan- 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 nanosblade ako sa tanong ni Sir. Oo, no? Buti na lang, buti na lang hindi ako yung speaker. Bahala ka dyan, Sir Randolph. <laughs> <laughs> so, mga dyan, ulo, oh, ano yung audits? <laughs> Ay, ganun. Sir Paul, ano yung Sir po, Paul, nandiyan po kayo? Yan, so let's try to address po yung concern ni Sir Paul. Tama po ba ang intindi po namin na para pong may certain instrument and then titingnan po if you meet the requirements of that instrument. Tama po ba, sir? Yun po ba? Wala po yata si Sir Paul. Anyway, sir, uh, we will be getting back to you, Sir Paul. No? Baka may connection problems lang. Sige, we'll be moving on from Miss Geneva Eler. Good evening. May I ask if there are guidelines on how to identify research gaps in qualitative literature reviews? Thank you. Sir Isa pa rin po yung malaking usapin, no? yung uh, looking at the research gap. Siyempre, we have to exhaust the literature by reviewing, by keep on reading no? the different sources of literature. Una-una dyan, scholar.google.com. So start ka doon sa pinaka um, bago update na no? 2021 pababa. So para makapaghanap ka ng research gap. Siyempre, gagamit ka ng tabular way dyan, no? na ililista mo lahat ng literature na related sa topic mo, then you you take a look at ano yung findings nila, then you can also get some hypothesis. Uh, si, Doc jo- si, si Doc John Eller ba yun, Ma'am Lenis, yung nagtanong? Si Doc um, John. Si, si, si Ma'am Geneva Eller po. Opo, opo. Uh, ayan opo, si, si Doc John nga. Uh, isa po sa mga ano natin yan. Uh, loyal na uh, nakasama natin sa EdCore. Ina, ina, mag, inaantay ko na nga mag-apply na consultant yan para yung bigger, better, stronger natin, maging bigger, better, stronger, and mightier na pagkasama natin si uh, Doc Jen. Alam niyo po, Doc Jen, madali lang po pa, pa ang guidelines para sa research gap. Ang gawin niyo lang po dyan, busugin niyo yung mga panel members niyo. Naku, sigurado pong ano yan. No? <laughs> Makikita ka agad ang research gap dyan. Hindi, biro lang po. Uh, ang tawag dito, ako po ang sim- simple lang, pag, inahan, pag sa research gap po, para, ang ano ko lang dyan, ano ba yung nagawa ng mga, uh, pre- ano ba yung mga nagawa ng mga dating uh, researchers na, ng mga studies, at uh, ano yung hindi pa nila nagawa. Ako parating ganun yung 
uh, ginag, uh, gin, ginag, ginagamit kong guidelines para mag, makarating ako dun sa part na research gap. Inaalam ko kung ano yung nagawa ng mga previous studies para hindi ko na ulitin. Kasi kung nagawa na pala niya itong tanong na ito, nasagot na niya. So there is no there is no sense para i-conduct mo pa yung isang study. Pag nalaman mo na kung ano yung nagawa niya, ang susunod mo namang alamin, ano yung mga hindi pa niya nagawa, doon ka pwedeng pumasok. Uh, that, ang, ang study pala niya, ganito yung focus. Samantalang yung sa akin, ganito naman ang focus. Hindi pa niya nagawa ito. Therefore, doon lilitaw yung research gap. Doon ko madidis- kung hindi pa pala niya nagawa ito, therefore, ito yung calling ko bilang isang bagong researcher para uh, i-address ko yung mga bagay na hindi niya nagawa. Kasi madalas po ang sinasabi sa atin ng mga panel members, di po ba yung gas-gas na yan, marami nang gumawa niyan, nasagot na yan, parang ikaw na lang yung uh, hindi nakakaalam na matagal nang nasagot yung tanong na yan. Eh, ang ano lang po doon, ang paraan lang po doon para maipakita mo na meron ka pa rin gap na pinipil Uh, yung uh, may, may ipakita mo pa rin na kahit marami nang ginawa na parang katulad ng study mo, kaya nga sabi natin, di ba, related, quote-unquote, related literature and studies, related lang sila. Yes, meron silang pagkakahawin sa study mo, pero you can prove that your study is unique, your study is novel, and there's still a gap that you would like to uh, to to fill in doon sa pagkandak ng study. Thank you po. Thank you po, Dr. Chard. Ayan. So, Ma'am Jen, sama na kayo, ha? <laughs> so, and uh, we have another question here from Mr. Angelo Pena Redonda. As long as the researchers are properly guided and with enough resources, it is possible. So, I think he's referring to the ethnography. Digital ethnography is only applicable if there is an application or software that could migrate data and or with a proper model to use to properly analyze through though it is very challenging. It takes time to conduct ethnography considering the dynamics and environment. Okay, so that's a comment po from Sir Angelo. Okay, so let's see. We have another question from Ronnie Fell Apsay. Good evening po, Sir. Paano po ang structure ng data analysis na pinagsama ang focus group discussion at in-depth interview? Thank you very much po for your generosity. Ayan po, sir. Paano daw po pagsasamahin ang ang data po? Depende yan, ma'am, sa ano yun, dun sa iyong ano, SOT questions, di ba? Kung halimbawa, um, what are the adjustments made by the senior high school students in online lear- online synchronous learning? So kung ganyan na adjustments, no, at marami ang iyong mga participants or respondents, syempre, nag-conduct ka ng FGD and as well as the Um, in the interview so ang mga yari dyan, ang structure nyan yung pinaka ano nila no? yung pinaka major team ng kanilang ano uh, responses so I think um, hindi mo pwede paghiwalayin yung yung responses kasi nga meron tayong pinatawag na identifying teams and that would actually be included in the coding process So, yes, Apo. I agree with uh, Sir Randolph no? kasi um, the purpose why we do these uh, two methods of gathering information is uh, to solicit information on the similar topic. So talaga pong hindi natin pwedeng paghiwalayin. And actually, they should complement and uh, uh, what you call this, pwede kasing taliwas dun sa nakuha mong information in another methodology. So maganda po yun na nagkakaroon ng, disca- dun na po yun sa discussion portion kung paano makikita yung trend ng mga sagot nila. So ayan po. So tama po si Sir Randolph, it's really based on the themes that uh, you're going to generate on your um, analysis. So meron po from Sir Glenn Villones, Modern Ethnography Doc. Ayan. So may comment po si Sir. Aha. Uh, sa may qualitative research po, ma'am. Sir Paul? Yan, ah, tama okay. na una. Oo, ah, yeah, yun yeah, unang okay. question. So, so, tungkol po ito sa, uh, balikan po natin, ha? Yung sa qualitative audits, compare oh, current practice against structural measures. Hindi ba siya makakapag-open ng mic, kahit mic lang, kung hindi pwede sa cam, para mas malinawan sa tanong, at makapag-follow up yes, yung yung speaker natin. Opo, Sir Paul. Ano na lang po tayo? Usap na lang po. <laughs> opo, opo. Hi, Sir Paul. 
Sige lang po, sir. Uh, we will be uh, entertaining your question po. Kasi po, uh, ako po, ako ang intindi ko po dyan kung po pwede po maging qualitative research ang isang parang assessment of a certain ano to, eh, performance versus a standard form. Para sa akin po, pwede naman po siya maging qualitative research but uh, of course, hindi po parang ang magiging uh, result lang po natin dito ano yung mga kakulangan, ano yung mga best practices. Parang ganun lang po. Kasi wala naman po tayo iba pang pinagkuhanan ng data. Kasi para lang ano lang po, parang checklist lang po. Ano. So baka po hindi ganun kalalim yung pwede po natin magawa po. And if it's just a, an assessment based on a certain checklist. Uh, I hope medyo related po yung sagot ko <laughs> dun sa inyong ano, katanungan, Sir Paul. Okay. Sa akin naman, ma'am, ano, to be able to have a more rigorous ano, no, um, result of the study, mag-ano na lang si Sir, mag-mix method. Parang hindi naman masayang qualitative part niya. Yeah, tama po, Sir. Bali po si assessment, pwede po siyang samahan ng konting interview no, tungkol po doon sa mga key points na na gusto niyang bigyang pansin no, based doon sa nakita niya na result ng checklist. No? Pwede rin po yan, sir. So, I hope, Sir Paul, medyo na-address po namin ang concern niyo. So, ayun po, let's move on to Sir Jose Valdez. Repertory grid po ginagawa ko para madali po ma-identify ng GACs. Ayan, yan po ang sabi po ni Sir Valdez. And then, ayan, from Ma'am Jen. Thank you, Dr. Richard. Very well said. Ayan, uh, from Mr. Ronnie Fell. Thank you po, sir. Well explained po. And from Sir Simon Toribio, sa mga students po ba, manual thematic analysis? Uh, I think nasagot na po ata ni Sir Randolph ito yes, kanina. Po. Tama po, Basta sir. Basta po yung Ayan. teacher, marunong din mag-manual thematic analysis. Ayan, so nire-recommend po ni Sir Randolph. <laughs> Ayan, so kasi doon naman po nagsisimula, kailangan marunong po tayo mag-manual thematic kasi... Ano lang na po yun, kumbaga tool lang po yung ating mga software. Ayan, so Paul, Sir Paul, thank you po ma, medyo mahina at hindi naka-function ang Zoom app ko. Okay lang po sir, salamat po sa pagtugon. So anyway sir, pwede naman po kayo mag-email, mamaya pa we'll be giving uh, our email address kung may ma-concern pa po kayo. Okay, so at this point po, mukhang wala na pong question sa ating chat box. Meron pa po bang gustong humabol before we close our open forum? Huh? Open forum? This is the open forum. Yes, sir. The Q&A, sir. Okay, sir. So, meron pa po ba, sir? Other questions po? Wala na siguro, ma'am. Wala na. Okay. So, kung wala na po. So, we will be proceeding with Yeah, so we will be uh, giving the certificate of recognition, of course, to our resource person. But let me read the contents of the certificate. Embracing the culture of research at CORE Educational Research Center, Santa Ana, Pampanga, Philippines, present the certificate of recognition to Randolph G. Katungal, MS, MA, for his invaluable time and expertise as a resource speaker in the National Webinar on Practical Research 1, Qualitative Research and Practical Research 2, quantitative research of EDCOR Educational Research Center held on April 7, 14, and 21 and conducted under the advocacy Project Sagip Mananaliksik for Everyone with advisory from the Department of Education, signed overall project coordinator Bernadette L. Leharde, and of course, the head research consultant, Dr. Richard Sanchez. So thank you very much, Paul, uh, Sir Randolph. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you also, especially please receive to our, Yeah, please receive our digital, digital certificate for now. Okay, and of course, um, for everyone, please watch out for our next set of webinars. So the title is Unveiling the Truth and Embracing Reality Through Faithfulness with the Data, a call for every researcher. So our day one will be on May 5, day 2 on May, May 12, day 3. May 26. So same time from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. So you just visit the Facebook page of EdCore and you will be finding the registration forms there. 
And of course, uh, let's support the project Mananaliksik for everyone. And of course, more on the one-on-one, -on -one, wherein there are uh, uh, where there are projects that we are extending our help to our students. So actually, EdCore is not selling these products. So it's from a Blueprint Shop by Dr. Mark Joseph B. Sangil. So he's the owner. Um, you can buy this uh, from his shop. So you can also contact him directly if you wanted to purchase the products for, uh, I think, three fifty dollars for the collared shirt and two fifty dollars for the t-shirt, if I'm not mistaken, for the price. So just um, get in touch with Sir Mark no, if you wanted to help uh, EdCore no, in its uh, projects. And of course... Uh, to formally close our program, we would like to call on uh, the Research Publication Coordinator, Oficio del Verbo Divino, formerly Divine Word University, to deliver us a closing remarks. May we call on Mr. Barry Anthony Parenas. Ayan. Hi, Sir Barry. Good evening. Hello po. Good evening sa ating lahat. Uh, maupay nga gabi ha atin nga tanan, inuaray. So good evening um, especially to um, Dr. Richard Sanchez, our head consultant. Our guest speaker for tonight, Sir Randolph Katungal. Of course, our moderator, Assistant Professor Lenny Sapara. And to all our consultants and to everyone who are here right now, good evening. So I personally think that this um, night is a very inspirational, a very meaningful night that we're able to get a lot of substantial uh, ideas coming from our guest lecture. And at the same time, uh, personally, kasi hindi pa din ako take off the last time around. So this is also like an opportunity, not just to learn a lot of things, but also to affirm our commitment on the field of research or doing advocacy ng ating research center, which is to make um, research more accessible and more meaningful to a lot of people. So I think tonight is a very inspirational night in a way that we're able to affirm that kind of commitment. Um, I would like to thank and congratulate our lecturer for, for that really um, robust discussion on data collection and analysis procedure. I particularly love the, the, the presentation because of the details regarding different data collection procedures. Um, you were able to operationalize and give like fundamental consider parang you were able to present fundamental considerations that we have to sort of take into account in in choosing the appropriate data collection method at saka yung um, data analysis procedure we're also um provided with indigenous practices in data collection and analysis at at i think yung part din ng making sure that research is responsive to our social conditions. So there was also a presentation where um, data collection methods related to like the digital world uh, were also presented. I think, I know, pinapakita nun yung flexibility ng research methods natin and how it tries to adapt to present day social condition. So thank you so much. And in behalf of EdCore, thank you so much, Sir Randolph. And thank you so much for all the consultants and all the participants here who are here. Uh, Damo nga salamat. Good evening. Thank you very much, Sir Barry. So welcome to EdCore, being a new uh, research consultant that we have. So again, to all of our participants for um, the two-hour session, we'd like to thank you for being part of EdCore's project, Mananag Seek to everyone. I hope we'll still be seeing you, to, uh, seeing you in our future projects and uh, we will be learning research all together. And of course, I'd like to share uh, the, uh, the evaluation link. It's actually uh, posted in our um, chat box. Nakita po ba? Ayan. So please uh, copy in the, the, the link Ayan, before we close the session. So on behalf of uh, all the uh, research consultants, the regional the provincial coordinators, the regional coordinators, and of course the Head of our uh, head research consultant of EdCore, would like to thank you very much for attending our um, session for today. So, uh, magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat and uh, magingat po lahat. Stay safe po and please stay negative. So.